Welcome back to Sim Project, everybody. This is the Garmin GTC 500 Autopilot as found in the Vision Jet. Uh, it's found in the SR22 G7 as well. Uh, however, we don't have that model for Flight Sim 2020 or 2024 yet, so we're not going to talk about that. But yeah, found this on Thingiverse. I've resin printed it, and uh, I don't know if you can see it. My cleaning solution for my resin printer must have had some contaminants or something in it because the finished surface isn't perfect. So I may actually reprint that again, but all resin printed. The lettering is actually because it's all a recessed print, which the resin printer does very, very nice. That's just white silicone. I've just kind of, you know, wetted my fingers down a little bit and smeared the silicone in. And with a little bit of water, it makes it really easy to wipe off and keep clean. So that's how that finished up nicely. The level button, you can see it's blue with the black and the white lettering. Well, what I did there, and there's one of the buttons. I printed the button in blue, uh, masked it off around the edges where I wanted to keep it blue, and then just took a black Sharpie and colored over it. And you know what? There's a little tiny bit of bleed over in this corner that I can see. I don't know if the camera's gonna show it or not. But yeah, other than that, it looks pretty good. Now this unit, thanks to somebody over at uh, Flight Sim DIY, does have circuit boards. He did the template for the circuit boards. There's one of the boards there, and then the other larger one. Now, I ordered these, uh, I can't remember who exactly I ordered from, one of the, the big, you know, uh, board creating, or the uh, circuit board printing uh, groups out there. Of course, you have to order a minimum of five. I only needed one set, so I have four other complete sets. So if you're looking for a set of uh, uh, boards, in the description of the video, I'm going to put my uh, Discord ID. Shoot me a, a private message on Discord, and uh, you know I'll get you a PayPal me like 20 bucks or something like that. And I'll send you the boards. That'll cover the shipping, and I'll also drop in. I printed some of these extra blue buttons as well, uh, because of course the blue filament, or sorry, the blue resin. Uh, I could only buy a one kilogram uh, bottle of blue resin in the right color, so you know <laughs> I got a whole bunch of blue resin. Don't waste your money buying your own blue resin unless you have some. I'll kick a, a level button in as well. But yeah, that's the unit. Um, I got to make a couple mods to it. The uh, encoders are a different size, the ones I have, than what was actually meant for the design of the button. So the uh, caps slide off real easy. And there's also a, uh, a click on that button for a sink. And uh, that's going to be a pain to put it back on. And uh, the depth is not right inside this one for the encoder I have. So I'm going to have to uh, modify this button a little bit. Got to run over to an Arduino Omega. Now you might wonder why I use such a big Arduino for such a simple little setup. Um, that's because with this I'm going to have triple uh, GTC 570s. So those 570s need about, I think they use about 10 inputs each. So that's 30 other inputs. That'll run over, that'll fill that unit up nicely. And all that way I'll have one Arduino controlling, you know, the whole lower half of the panel. And then the switch panel will have its own smaller one as well. But yeah, that's it. Put about a meter of cable on it just to make it, uh, give me room to move around. Now I did actually try and print this on my Bamboo P1S. If you don't have a resin printer. Um, and it didn't do a bad job. I mean, it's, you know, considering what it is. The, uh, over the VS uh, rate knob here, it, there is a... Uh, a bit of a finger lift to kind of like a protector and a bit of a filler. So unfortunately you can't print this face down to get the, a better texture finish on it. But it didn't do a bad job, all things considered. Um, and actually I'm holding it upside down, so there you go. But yeah, so that's that. Um, let's, uh, let's get it downstairs on the sim and let's try it out and see how it works. Okay, down here in the sim got things set up and I've noticed one thing right off the hop. I'll just do a quick screen shot of this. Um, this is Moby Flight, so I've built my list for the Vision Jet. All the controls, all the buttons seem to be working. What I have noticed is uh, on the rotaries here, there's a push to sync, and I was talking about how these don't quite mesh properly. 
to get that push button. The push button on these encoders I have, it's actually, they're actually pretty hard to get them to push. I'm going to have to check at the Moby Flight settings, see if I can clean that up. Something else I've also noticed too with this that I've just realized now doing this, I have a IAS button on here for a speed selector. But if you look at the actual aircraft up there, we have a flight level change button. So I'm going to have to go into the design and uh, with my very minor CAD skills I have and uh, change that, create a uh, flight level change button. I guess while I'm in there modifying stuff, I'll probably, uh, I'll probably dump the yob damper button and of course the nav we use but on the vision jet the nav is where the track is and there is no track button so I may modify that I may leave it the same I don't know it depends on the other aircraft I get into flying so uh, I got a quick little flight plan in here I'm sitting on the ground at Toronto the uh, weather's a little gray but we're going to uh, jump up we'll do a flight over to London and once I'm up in the air level I'll show you how uh, things are working so we're on the climb out of Pearson. We're through 3,000, heading for five. Autopilot's on. I've just got the heading locked of 230 because we took off runway 23. And uh, we are in flight level change, holding 165 knots. So what I'm going to do is before we run out of this, because it says we're supposed to go to 22,000, we're going to spin that up. So we'll just roll that up. And maybe you can see that change, I'm not sure, but I've got my uh, SATEC autopilot connected to the indicator as well. So we're going to dial that right up to flail 220. I'm going to have to turn the speed up on that a little bit because clearly the, uh, the feedback on that is a little slow. So we'll just go to 14 for now. We'll stay in that climb at 165. Now let's do the heading. So there's our heading change. And again, the SATEC panel set show the return. You can see the heading change going to 270. Now, looking at the map, I did put a, a departure in. It says we're supposed to be heading 245, so let's zip around to 245. There's 245 there coming around. There's our track coming in. I guess at this point, let's go to uh, nav, flip to nav mode. There's a nav button, kick to FMS, because that's what I've got configured for to do. And you can see us rolling around. So let's come out of flight out of flight change mode. And we'll just go VS. We'll do a manual VS control. So there's our VS. It shows we're VSing at 2100 feet per minute. And we do have a rotary dial here. And I'll just leave that up there. You can see, so there's 2500. We'll back it right down to 700 if we want to do and our speed will come up and you can hear the engine will start to idle back in a minute. Oh, I guess no, actually, well, the auto throttle is not active. Let's go ahead and activate the auto throttle. Here. Now the auto throttle is active. You can see our thrust coming back. We can bump that back up. Oh, and actually, you know what? I've got that backwards, as you can see. So the up is here, the down is there. And when I roll the knob, I'm actually selecting up and it's showing a negative. So I'll have to go into, uh, Moby Flight and flip that around, not a hard thing to do. That is the Garmin GTC 500 for the Vision Jet. Yeah, works pretty good. Like I said, I gotta do a couple mods on those, uh, on these knobs, because like they fall right off too, that's the other annoying thing. Every time you move this thing around, they fall off on the ground below you. So yeah, gonna have to uh, resize them inside to make them work with the shaft encoders that I had. And uh, have to re-enable that uh, IAS button to make a uh, flight level change button instead of it. Yeah, um, like I said at the beginning, I will put the uh, link for all this stuff in the description below, uh, along with my uh, Discord um, username if you want to look me up and uh, you want a couple of those extra circuit boards I got laying around, drop me uh, a direct message on Discord and we'll see what we can do about getting you one. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you then.